Welcome to Three Beers IT, a home for disinhibited conversations about the world of IT. The things that maybe don't get said until folks are on their third beer or glass of wine or equivalent. And as always, Three Beers IT urges listeners of legal drinking age to drink responsibly and to not spill. It shorts out the equipment and it stinks up the HVAC. Today, and with apologies to Capital One, we're talking about what's in your data center and everything from asset management to the software bill of materials. I'm John Burke, CTO at Nemertes, 17 years an analyst here in about seven days time, and before that, about 18 years as an IT guy. Everything from writing software to managing networks and data center teams to doing enterprise architecture. And uh, my beer for today is a Long Trail Ale from the nearby Long Trail Brewery in Vermont. It is a fantastic, rich, deep, smooth beer that's good on hot days or cold. And the weather is definitely leaning cold today. And today, joining me is Kurt Havard, Managing Director of Information Services for the Rain Corporation. And Kurt, here to introduce yourself further. Great. Yeah. Th thanks, John. It, it, thanks for having me come on here. You're, you're like one of the uh, best IT guys I know. And, and probably the <laughs> nicest guys around. Um, you know, so I, 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 I appreciate you thinking about me. Um, yeah, I, I am, uh, I'm with the Rand Corporation. I, I am very fortunate I get to work with like the smartest people on earth every day, uh, you know, solving the world's problems. Um, and, and with that comes, you know, the responsibility of making sure that, uh, you know, I give them the, the capabilities they need to do their job. And of course, in today's world, everything's electronic. And if it's electronic and sits on their desktop, it probably comes through my department. So, um, you know, it's a, it's, it's a big responsibility to make sure that, uh, you know, I service everybody in, in a way that uh, can, can help, the, help them be as productive as possible. So, uh, you know, and part of that is keeping my data center clean and, and up to date. <laughs> And, you know, we talk about what's in the data center and it always comes down to stuff and, and people. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, with IT, the goal is usually to abstract away the people whenever it's inconvenient to talk about them. So let's talk about the stuff um, uh, in a data center like RANS. What's it like trying to manage the assets? Well, I mean, you know, the, the, the thing about RAND is their, their company has been around for a long time. And um, they have they have a um, a wide ranging number of systems they use. I mean, we, we still have. I mean, just because of the you know the work we do and the platforms we work on, um, we, we you know we still have some older systems kicking around that probably most people don't. Uh, mm -hmm. So so it takes a little special care, yeah. um, you know, uh, a little special knowledge, uh, you know, some things like that. Um, but but we've also got a, a lot of new stuff. Um, um, but, but I tell you, the most important thing I have in my portfolio is my asset management system. It all starts mm -hmm. with understanding what I have. Um, and it's not, it, 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 people think about assets as, um, you know, hard things, something that if you dropped it on your foot, it would hurt, or you set it on your desktop. Yeah. Um, but, but in my world, you know, assets are also, um, soft things. Um, uh, enterprise agreements that I have with suppliers. To me, that's an asset. Um, mm -hmm. Even something as, as simple as uh, security certificates that, you know, that, that run for every sure. application I have, right? Those are assets. And if, if, you, you know, if you get yourself in a situation where you don't, you don't know what shape those are in, um, you can find yourself uh, in a lot of problems. If, you know, for instance, if, if certificates start expiring, you know, in the middle of the day when, when people are, um, you know, working on applications that suddenly they can't do something, that becomes an issue. So it's, it's tracking those, um, those uh, soft things and, you know, as well as the hard things. But those are all things in my data center. And it's pretty clear, as you've just been saying, how... Um, understanding what's in there can help you deliver services right now uh, to the folks that you're uh, keeping going. What about 
how things go in the future? How does how does having a good idea of what everything is in your data center help you make plans for the future? Oh, that, that is a really good question. I mean, I'm thinking back to my days when I first started in IT and John, I've been probably doing this at least as long as you have, right? I mean, I'm coming up on uh, a little over 40 years, okay? And um, but back, yeah. back in the day, uh, you know, an asset, a computer asset was typically set to last 36 months. I mean, that, that was kind of the life of a computer asset. Yep. You figure, you know, you, you know, after 36 months, the electronic wears out and you know, kind of falls apart. <laughs> and, then, and then it sort of moved up to, um, you know, uh, I think the typical rule was something close to maybe 60 months. Now we're, you know, we're, we're pushing 72 months for a lot of the, uh, you know, assets, uh, yeah. asset life cycles. Um, so we, we don't, we don't bring in as much new stuff as frequently as we used to. And of course, you know, the way the world changes, it used to be, you know, technology would change every, you know, every year, every couple of years. Now you're, you know, you're, you're talking months. It's like every, uh, you know, every, every 12 to 18 months, you've got new technology. So if your, if your life cycle of, of a product is seven years, by the time you get around to refreshing it, you're on, you know, two or three generations back from, you know, from a hardware perspective. So, well, and, and also, I mean, keeping in mind seven years is sort of a, an average. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> and you'll have things true. that are on the two year end of that. And you'll have things that are on the 15 year end of that. Uh, yeah. Um, which. Uh, I know probably actually affects you more than most mm -hmm. because oh. of the nature of the, the business that you do. Right. So whenever you, you, you know, you, you talk about planning for the future and where you want to go, um, it becomes a real mixed bag because I have got, I've got all, all number of assets in, in my data center that range in, in age and, um, and generation, you know, kind of across the board. Um, so, so that's why it's important to, to have a comprehensive asset management system. So I can lay all that out. I can say what's expiring in a year, what's expiring in two years, what's expiring in three years. If I have that information and I start, you know, taking a strategy of rolling it all into an enterprise agreement with a single supplier, that gives me leverage whenever I go out and negotiate. And, and, oh, absolutely. And, and, and they hate that because they know what's in it. <laughs> they, know, they, they know what's in my data center. They know what I have, you know, before I do. So if they know and I don't, it gives them the upper hand. I, I, it, it just, it's boggling, though, to think that um, it is the work of many systems and people to put together that full picture of what's in your data centers um, and that the, uh, the long tail of technologies that you've, you've got trailing behind you as, you as you move forward and new things come in, but not everything old leaves, uh, it leaves lots of nooks and crannies that uh, things wind up hiding in little, little, little places where they're covered in shadows. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we've spent time, uh, you and I personally, and I've spent time in other episodes of, of three beers, uh, talking about technical debt yes. and, you know, how do you see asset management feeding into that? Like, you know, do you have to have an inventory of swords before you can figure out which ones are hanging over your head? <laughs> I, you know, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, at, at, at the, you know, sort of the rudimentary level, any, any good manager knows what that, that, you know, hanging fruit of technical debt is, right? I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't need a, a everything cataloged in a system when I walk through my data center and I see something that, that's been sitting there for, you know, for 20 years. You know, I, I don't I don't need a system to tell me that that is probably a piece of technical debt that's costing me more money and time than uh, 
than, than I really want it to. Um, it's just, when is it going to get painful enough for me to address it? Um, cause does I, asset management help you okay, go sure. proactive on that though, to, to say, Hey, these things are crossing a threshold well, and maybe I should do it now instead of five years from now. Yeah. You know, asset management is probably not going to help me much for those things that have been around for, you know, 15 or 20 years. But what asset management will do is it, it's going to help me keep something from something else from hanging around for 15 or 20 years. Um, exactly. I, yeah. I think, I mean, well, first of all, yeah, I mean, you know, te te technical debt is the biggest enemy of, of every IT budget out there. And it's a silent enemy. And, and, and it really, it, um, <laughs> well, it, 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 it flabbergasts me the number of, of IT managers that just don't understand that. Um, you know, uh, and, and I say, I didn't understand it until a few years ago myself. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but, but I think the strategy that I've learned to take is, um, you've got a number of different systems out there and you've got a number of different components that make up those systems. And in a lot of cases, um, with a lot of companies, those components are, are made up from disparate providers or suppliers. So you end up trying to mm -hmm. uh, make things work together or knit things together that don't have, you know, a, a natural cohesive ability. But we, you know, we people on IT, right. we're smart. So we just make it happen. And you know what? That works <laughs> really good for about the first 24 months. But then, you know, some API changes or, 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 or some, you know, some version of something gets upgraded. And suddenly it doesn't work as good as it used to. And it degrades from there. And then, and then you find yourself hiring an army of people just to maintain it. Okay. That, that is probably the worst. Example. If you can even find that, if you can even find people who are capable of maintaining it. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I, worked, I worked for one company on a very critical piece of, um, of equipment that supported the military. And um, it, it, the systems on it were fairly old. And we, we literally found the last person living that knew how that system works so we could make some changes to it. So, I mean, that's... Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> I, 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 I have a similar story from uh, one of my previous employers. Uh, it was a university and the... A core of delivering services to students was putting them in classrooms with their professors. And they had software to do that, to assign available space to uh, classes that people were enrolled in. But the only person who understood it was the person who wrote it, yeah. um, who had written it uh, on a platform that was no longer available, but it would still run in binary form on a platform we had in house. And uh, I think he was coming in and just tweaking machine code at one point or, or at, at, at some point, that's what it transitioned to. And they had to get him out of the retirement home mm -hmm. to do this mm -hmm. every year, mm -hmm. which he was willing to do. He was dedicated, you know, to the core IT guy, <laughs> but he would come back every year out of retirement and, and tweak the program to deal with changes in space that's available. Um, that was probably the biggest slap in the face, uh, technical debt description, uh, I encountered in my career. Uh, although good physical metaphor, uh, I was in another place where, uh, uh, we had mini computers and system consoles. You remember system consoles, oh, yeah. uh, sitting next to them, actual terminals. Uh, and sometimes the terminal was connected to, uh, a, a, a line printer. And it would also print out on the printer anything that came up on the on the management console because uh, it was just a terminal after all. There's no graphics or anything. Uh, and there was a chain of adapters going from the uh, uh, mini computer to the terminal and then the printer. And every couple of years, a new adapter would get strung into that set 
because some standard would change. And so there'd be this connector that was 10 years old and then this connector that was five years old and then this one that was three years old. It was like seven connectors deep by the time I got to it. <laughs> um, and things were starting to, you know, give off the, the smell of overheated metal on that printer. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so no. technical debt, don't let this happen oh, to well, you. Let me tell you, I didn't have anything like that in my data center. Okay. Uh, not not quite that good. Bad. Not not quite that bad. So actually, I have a I have a, a very good team of people that work for me, and um, and you've met them. You know, I mean, um, yeah, they, yeah. They do, they do an outstanding job of uh, of keeping things fresh, keeping things the way that they're they're supposed to be, and um, it, you know, I, they're the reason I'm successful. Um, I think you've heard me say this before, and, and I, I tell, I mean, I tell the executives in my company, you know, I am never the smartest person in the room, but you know what? It's not my job to be the smartest person in the room. It's my job to know who the smart people are and how to use them properly. And, and I think that's what makes me successful in, in, in what I do. Absolutely. And, and you are very successful at what you do. <laughs> it, it's a, uh, it's a joy to see. <laughs> Um, well, let me ask one more question orbiting this idea of asset management, because I've been spending a lot of time lately, um, digging into the whole software bill of materials, mm -hmm. uh, uh, piece of, of the world right now. And, uh, for anybody who's listening, who's not familiar with them, uh, you know, the idea is that you'll get something that tells you what went into the making of the software that you are running in your data center, mm -hmm. uh, sort of the ingredients list. And, you know, right now for most vendors, uh, getting that, even that degree of detail about source code is like, you know, it's like getting the secret recipe to Coke. <laughs> you just can't. Right. Um, but now the feds are starting to lean on their providers to produce them on demand at this point. Um, and leaving aside the fact that you guys probably wind up producing these things for your customers. Uh, what about you as a customer? Would you find having a, a software bill of materials useful to you uh, uh, in managing your data center, your assets? Well, absolutely. I mean, you know, I, I, for the last you know twenty plus years, I, I've worked for government contractors, and and that's actually something that that that. Um, you know, my current employer and my previous employer have always been concerned about it. And, and, mm -hmm. I mean, and you know, I, I've worked in um, uh, national security for, you know, for a long time. And, and part of national security is, um, is understanding threats that are coming our way. And we do have adversaries out there that have figured out way to, ways to hide things in, um, you know, computer code or, you know, even even in hardware, right? In in, in chipsets. Mm -hmm. um, so so, you know, we are very conscious uh, conscious of of you know what what we have running in our data centers, running on our desktops, running on our networks and our platforms. Um, not only from a hardware perspective, but from a software perspective. So um, I, I I I have to be very careful about where I source. Um, uh, you know, resources or, 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 or systems from. So. Absolutely. So ha having, having that. It'd be nice to be able to have. Uh... Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I would say, I would say having that, that, that list of um, uh, bill of materials for, you know, for code or for software is something that, that, that really is kind of a must for us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I've just been thinking about, uh, like on, on a slightly different part of the universe, uh, how many IoT devices have wound up running old TCP IP stacks that were riddled with bugs and, and extremely vulnerable if they weren't entirely isolated from the internet, which most of them weren't. Correct. Uh, and of course, they were vulnerable to anything that was on the same network as them. So if something got turned into part of a botnet, it could see all those devices and how to exploit them. Um, so yeah, yeah, I can see a, a huge potential there for uh, just about anybody for getting that deeper understanding of what they've got and, um, what's inside it. Yeah. 
And let me. I, I, and gosh, uh, are, 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 we, are we out of time? Are we out of time? I was just going to say that was my last question for you, but you go ahead. <laughs> well, I was, I was going to say just one other thing, sort of, sort of to bring up. You know, you're asking me what's uh, what's mm-hmm. in my data center, but the big question is what's not going to be there two or three years from now, right? I mean, mm-hmm. we're moving everything out to the cloud. Everybody is. I'm not just talking about my company, but uh, just the world in general. Um, I think we're going to see less things in our data center, and from a business perspective bringing it back to asset management, that causes me a little bit of a problem. Because in the past, as mm-hmm. I bought physical things and putting, put, you know, sort of putting them together, they were all bought with, uh, with capital dollars. They were capital assets. And I could get, and I could typically get, get capital through just about anything. But now that we're moving everything out, it's not hard, it's soft. So, so we're moving into a world of um, operations expense. And operations expenses is uh, not as easy to manage at times as capital. So I think that we're going to see not only oh, yeah. not only that our, our asset management system is going to be important for helping us manage what's in the data center or um, you know our physical assets or, or or you know even help with technical debt. I think we're going to use it as a tool um, in in the coming years to help us manage our budgets and determine how how we can keep that OPEX under control. Does that make sense? I, it, it, oh, yeah. No, it does. And, and yet I, I can see lots of facets to this because, you know, one man's fully depreciated asset is another man's technical debt. You got it. You <laughs> and, got it. So, um, yeah, there, absolutely. There, there's a, a difficulty there. Uh, And it's probably worth considering, too, Mm -hmm. that there's going to be a filtering effect. And the stuff that you succeed in getting out to cloud may uh, uh, greatly increase the concentration of debt-ridden systems that remain in your data centers. Yes. You know, it's it's going to... It's going to get to the point where when I walk through my data center, the only thing that's going to be there is technical debt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it, you can see that the the uh, barrier, the energy barrier you've got to get across to get right. that out into the cloud, it just gets higher and higher. You got it. So Yeah. <laughs> uh, well... Kurt, it has been a blast having you on, and it has been a real pleasure to to dig in and talk to you like this. Uh, Thanks. Thanks so much for joining me, and thanks, obviously, to everybody who has uh, uh, downloaded this and listened to it or uh, caught it in some other fashion. And until next time, uh, I'm John Burke, and this has been Three Beers IT. And I'm going to stop the recording. Oops, if I could get there.